Hi everyone and welcome to this Fusion 360 webinar. Today we're going to be demonstrating why 4-axis rotary is a reason to upgrade to the machining extension. Okay, so this is what the agenda looks like for this session. Firstly, we'll go over who I am and what I specialize in. Next, we'll look at why extensions exist at a high level. Then we'll look deeper into why the machining extension exists and specifically Fusion 360 core versus the machining extension. Then even deeper than that at the single strategy for axis rotary and why this alone is a reason to upgrade to the machining extension. After that, we'll summarize and cover everything that we've been over in the session. And finally, we will go through how you can get access to this technology. So who am I then? So clearly you can see my name is Dylan Smith. I started off my career by doing a four year manufacturing apprenticeship, which is very common in the UK. It's where you learn and work on the job. Um, including that apprenticeship, I spent seven to eight years machining all kinds of different components, such as molds, dyes, generative design parts, 2D, 3D, um, a whole host of different kinds of geometries and different materials, predominantly using CNC milling machines. In early 2020, I became a team leader in Autodesk's Birmingham Technology Centre. And around 10 or 11 months after that, I started the current job that I'm in now, which is Customer Advocacy Manager for Manufacturing. So in this job, I do things like this, where I can convey the, the benefits of Fusion 360 to, to customers, um, along with that finding pain points within the software um, and ultimately helping customers to increase their productivity and increase their experience with Fusion 360. So extensions and what are they and why do we have them? So firstly, extending our platform. Eliminate disconnected tools by extending your workflows with specialized technologies in one platform, opposed to having several, which is more costly and often has a very steep learning curve. Next, simplifying our manufacturing processes. Improve operational efficiency with automated and optimized workflows across teams to increase manufacturing throughput and reduce time to market. Next, making innovating easier. Increase innovation with access to new capabilities that remove non-value added processes and enhance collaboration for easier development of smart products. So more specifically, the machining extension, what is it and why do we have it? So firstly, to simplify and automate your workflows, making use of different technologies in the machine extension to reduce your programming time, reduce errors, and of course, ultimately make better components. Next is to reduce cycle times, making use of the powerful technology to reduce cycle times to improve our efficiency. And, for, and finally, produce better quality parts. Our advanced strategies allow our customers to reach their full potential by offering the tools that are needed. Better surface finish plus less manual finishing, of course, equals better quality parts. So this is what the core versus machining extension offering looks like. Fusion 360 Core, we have a lot of basic tools which can fulfill a lot of simple and basic needs, but the machine extension really has the more advanced upper level capabilities which unlock the potential to machine more complex, more 3D form components. More specifically today, as you'll hopefully know, we'll be focusing on four axis rotary and why that alone is a reason to upgrade to the machining extension. So firstly, before we get into the demonstration, what is four axis rotary? Well, it's a finishing toolpath which uses four axes of the machine simultaneously. It has various different styles, optimization options, and collision avoidance options that we'll go, be going through today. So without further ado, let's jump into Fusion 360 and let's see rotary in action. <clears throat> Before we get into exactly what rotary is, I want to show you a problem um, that rotary solves. So we look at this component here and it looks like a fairly simple component, but it does come with its manufacturing challenges. Firstly, the distance between the top face and the bottom face is very large. 
which means if we want to attack it in this orientate orientation, um, we need a very, very long tool. Next, it is undercut. So it's impossible for us to achieve them faces in a three axis orientation. If we did want to achieve it in three axis orientation, we would have a tool path which looks something like this, which would have collisions because our holder is hitting there, even though our tool is already incredibly long. So machining it in this way is not efficient and it's not feasible. Another way of doing it would be a series of indexable moves, but that is not an efficient process. Hence, we have four axis rotary. We have a style of manufacturing or a style of machining, which is very much suited to geometry like this. And there's a number of reasons why four axis rotary is the optimum method for machining this component. Number one, we are allowed to use a very short rigid tool, which in turn allows us to have better surface finish and allows us to be more efficient when manufacturing. We can go quicker, we can go harder and we end up with a better result at the end. Next, we can achieve that whole section of geometry in one continuous engagement with the component, which again is more efficient. It saves us time in programming and machining. And also it gives us a very nice result because we are constantly engaged with the component. So that's the why of rotary. Now, as I said, rotary has many different styles. So we have a spiral style, which we've just watched, where a rotary will engage with the component and it will continuously move down the part. This is very efficient from a time standpoint because we never disengage and we keep engaging throughout the whole component. Next, we have circular, which is very similar, but it's incremental moves. So we do a full turn of the, of the component with a perpendicular move. And this can be good for not leaving marks on the component if there's, a, if there's a convenient area for us to make that transition move. And then we have linear, which is perpendicular to both of them. Uh, linear will do a single move. It will use the axis to transfer over and then move. Um, the benefits to all of these is, is the versatility of the different styles. Now, having different styles, they all suit different geometries and give us different aesthetic looks. So they all come with their own advantages, but are very useful in different situations. Next, we have angular limits. Now, when you think of four axis rotary, you think that we have to be going all the way around the component, but that's not true. We often come across components which require a four axis method of manufacturing, but don't necessarily need the full 360. Now, four axis rotary has very simple, but very user friendly options to set different points here. So by the simple click of two points, we can restrict our toolpath via angular limits to keep it within that certain region. And this opens up the door for a, for a whole new scope of work, which can be done by four axis rotary because it doesn't have to necessarily be a full 360 degree component. Next, we have tool offset. So tool offset is a parameter which allows us to move the cutting point of the tool. Now, any seasoned machinists and veteran machinists out there will know that we do not want to cut with the middle and the bottom of a ball nose tool. The reason for that is because there's not much speed there and there also aren't much flutes there in the tool. When we, when we cut on the dead point of the tool, which, which is known at, we end up with a poor surface finish generally and we end up with a shorter tool life because we're not using the flutes and there's not much speed there. Now, if we look exactly what this means, you'll see that our cutting point is exactly in the middle of our tool. And that's not an optimum way to cut a component like this or an optimum way to use a ball nose tool. Now, tool offset allows us to move that cutting point more onto the flutes. So number one, we have more speed. And number two, we're gonna get drastically longer tool life because we're using more of the flutes, as I said. So you can see our tool is slightly tilted over with more on the flutes again better surface finish better tool life and you can see it's just a much more efficient way to machine a component like this the results will be night and day between tool offset off and tool offset on one factor of machining which is typically overlooked is the distribution of points on the component on the toolpath now points are 
the different short sections of G code, which are out, or, or NC code, which are posted out to the machine. Um, and generally, the more points and the tighter the point distribution, the more fluid machine motion we get, which has a lot of benefits, which I'll, which I'll talk through right now. So you can see all of these different cutting points and each different move is going to be a different line of NC code on our machine. Now, this isn't a bad point distribution, but if we had it tighter and more evenly spaced, our machine motion would be much more fluid. Now, you can see they are much tighter and there's much more of them. The machine motion is much more fluid, which in turn means that we get more efficiency from our toolpaths. They actually complete quicker because the machine moves in a more optimum way. And we get a better surface finish because there's no jerky movements in the axis movement. And finally, we end up with a more two nominal CAD model or, or component at the end because our tool is more true where it's supposed to be rather than jerking about and leaving excess material on the component. Now, the final piece of technology is something which we call automatic collision avoidance. Now, with different components and, and different tool holders and different tool paths, we can often get holder collisions where our tool holder can collide with our component. And there's often nothing that we can do about it. And we have to manually make changes to either our tool or our geometry or our tool path to get around that problem. So I'm going to show you exactly how we can use something called automatic collision avoidance to avoid that. Now, we'll look at this component here. It's a crank. Um, and if we simulate this, apologies if the simulation comes through a little bit jerky. Um, sometimes Zoom for video or Zoom uh, showing video does that. You can see that we have a series of collisions on our component. Now, the reason we have these collisions is because our tool is too short, but I don't want to make this tool longer. So what we have to do is either use shaft and holder, which is going to completely remove the areas where there's collision, which is not efficient at all, because we then have to come in with subsequent options um, to, to bridge this gap where we've removed the toolpath. So what we do, we turn on something called automatic collision avoidance which is a very simple tick box within the rotary toolpath. And what this does, it simply avoids the collisions by tilting the tool a necessary amount to make sure there is no collision there. So the implementation is a simple tick box, as you can see there, and I'll quickly show you how it works. So we simulate and you'll notice that there are no collisions whatsoever. As our tool goes round, you'll notice that as it comes to this section here, it will simply do a tilt away, avoiding the collision. Thus meaning we can take on much more work while using this four axis strategy. Now to recap everything we've been through, again, sorry it's rushed everyone, it's a very short webinar, um, but hopefully you've got a lot of information there. Four axis rotary, it's an automated four axis rotary style toolpath um, with different styles such as spiral, circular, and line. It has a tool offset of uh, it has a tool offset option, which allows us to move the cutting point of the tool for more efficiency. It has an option of smoothing available for better point distribution, which in turn equals more fluent machine motion. And finally, it has automatic collision avoidance, which allows us to avoid collisions in that axis, therefore meaning we can take on a bigger scope of work. So to summarize, we went through an introduction into who I am. Why do the extensions exist? More specifically, why does the machine extension exist and what is it? Then even more specifically for axis rotary and why that's a single reason to upgrade. Now, one action I will take of, or, or ask of everybody here is that you copy down this link and sign up for a free trial of the machine extension. If you cannot, um, do it this method, take your phone out. Uh, and if you go onto the, if you've got an iPhone, if you go onto the camera app and hover over that QR code, it will give you a link. And if you click that link, you will go to the appropriate landing page where you can make uh, or sign up for a free trial of the machine extension. Again, very rushed everybody, uh, but hopefully you got some good information in that 15 minutes. I'm hoping everyone got something out of it. And with that, I am 
looking forward to seeing what questions we have in the chat. Okay, I see one question in the chat and it is asking what else is in the machining extension? Okay, great question. So something else that's in the machining extension, we have Steep and Shallow, which is a tool path, uh, which is designed for 3D form. It's very good for things like dyes, mold tools, and anything which is complex in 3D. Now this also has collision avoidance, similar to rotary. So it's fully multi-axis. Um, we have toolpath trimming, we have hold recognition, we have advanced probing, we have a whole plethora of different technology within this machining extension. But if there's no more questions, let me thank everybody for taking the time out of their day to come and watch this webinar. I know it was very short and it's a very different format, but I hope everybody got something out of it and seen the benefit of the machining extension and more specifically for Axis Rotary. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day and have a great week. Bye-bye.